Well, good morning and happy new year. This is Dr. Manette Riordan, and this is Painting in Your PJs with Manette, where we gather to create, to talk about all things life, love, and art. So gather some supplies, join in. It doesn't really matter what you're working on. You can create along and hoping that these conversations are supporting you in your own creative journey to think differently about your art. And during the month of January, I'm going to be talking about archetypes. And archetypes are universal patterns that appear in every culture. So sometimes we look at archetypes like the mother is an archetype, the warrior is an archetype. And we're gonna talk about those a little bit later in the month. But I really wanted to start because it's what's been on my mind as I have been creating and journaling and thinking about the new year. And you can see I've already done some journaling on this page. And now I'm gonna put some gesso over the top of that. But when I started to think, and my ink is spreading, which is totally cool, it was about capturing the intention, not the words, but it helps already just get some marks down on that page. And I'm just gonna be working in one side of this journal for the moment. I love doing big spreads, but sometimes it's easier to just do one page. And interesting, so I'll talk about the journal in just a second, but the, the ink is smearing much more than it normally would um, because of the surface I'm working on. Good morning, Blanca. So in the first week of January, what I am going to be talking about are archetypal symbols or universal symbols. And I have decided that my symbol of the year is going to be the arrow. And there are many types of symbols that we see around the world. Tomorrow I'm going to be looking at the Hamsa. I want to look at the lotus flower this week. These are things that are really fun to create, but they have a lot of deep meaning and spiritual significance as well. And one of the things that I love about the symbolism of the arrow is that it has been occurring since the time of the Greeks. It has a lot of deep meaning and significance from across different cultures, starting with the Greeks, and think about Cupid and his arrows of love, all the way to our Native American traditions, indigenous traditions from many, many cultures. But the arrow has come to mean strength, clarity, focus. Think about an arrow flying directly to its target. They also meant protection and survival. It was how people, warriors, would get their food was with an arrow. And more recently, we've seen that good morning, happy new year. Thank you. I appreciate that, Marion. Glad you're here. We're talking about archetypal symbols. And my symbol of the year is going to be the arrow. It came to me in a meditation last week. And... I'm going to start adding, adding some color to this page while we talk, and this is right on top, so I'm going to add some lavender on here. don't know if I'm going to stick with that. Let it just mix right in with that gesso. But the in more recent times, when we think about some of the movies that have really popularized, <clears throat> excuse me, popularized the arrow, <clears throat> as soon as I start talking in the mornings, my voice gets froggy. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, I'm going to mute myself for a minute. Artemis's arrow, yes, absolutely. So many different meanings of the arrow. So many different cultures represent the, the arrow. And it's just going to take a few minutes here for my voice to warm up, so I apologize. <clears throat> the movie Brave, which I loved, which was an animated Disney movie about a young Celtic girl. The arrow was super important in that story. The fantasy fiction story of Hunger Games 
the bow and arrow was the heroine's weapon of choice. So there's so many different places that arrows show up culturally. But for me, it really is about that clarity of purpose and direction as I step into the new year and making sure <clears throat> that I know where I'm going and that I stay on track. And my word of the year is compassionate action. And so when I think about how am I in compassionate action, it's with this idea of clarity and focus and forward motion. Also talks, takes a lot of strength to shoot an arrow in the right direction. So an arrow is what I'm going to be playing with and talking about today. And I'm working in a different handmade journal today. This journal is made out of, I think this was just like a cereal box cover or something, but this uh, journal is made almost entirely out of just recycled manila folders. And it has a few things in it, but not too much. This was my practice journal for season three of the Creative Stretch. And Andrea and I actually show how to make this journal. It's a no-sew journal made with manila folders and either canvas tape or, or paper tape, either one. And I put a link in the description today's video. Um, <clears throat> we sell the replay for how to make this journal for 10 bucks over on the Creative Stretch. So if you're interested in making a really simple, inexpensive journal. But I also, there's something about the, the heavy weight of these manila folders, and these have all been pre-gessoed, that I really love creating on the surface. They create this very smooth surface. So that's what I'm going to be working in this month is this handmade no so journal which is a favorite and we're starting with the symbol of the arrow so why am i talking about archetypes and symbols this month i need to get this really dry here for a second so i'll tell you that in just a second but let me get my page dry So the reason that I wanted to talk about archetypes and symbols is because they are something that add more meaning to our lives when we look for external representations of how we're feeling on the inside. And, some, and it's just like having a word of the year to guide us. What are some of the other visual symbols <clears throat> that, and images that can guide us as we go throughout our year? And as I said, the arrow was the one that came to me today, but maybe there's another symbol that you've been seeing everywhere. <clears throat> I'm sorry. All right, it's cold and chilly this morning. I haven't had any congestion the last couple of days. I don't know what is it is about talking on these videos. If this happens, it'll pass in a couple of minutes. All right, so let me get a... So I just had some panes gray on my desk, so I'm going to just start adding some stencils. So as I always do, I'm just creating the base layers of this visual journal page using a die-cut letter stencil. <clears throat> But if you think about famous works of art throughout time, they often incorporate a variety of symbols. So you might think about symbols you've been seeing. Have you been seeing hearts everywhere or stars or moons? We're coming up on a full moon on Friday. Are you noticing something that just seems to be, every time you turn around, there's a, a recurring image? That's usually something that is asking you to pay attention. And that happens to me with symbols. It also happens to me with animals. Next week, I'll be talking about animal symbolism and the archetypal animals. And then the last two weeks of January, we'll be turning to some of the classic Jungian archetypal 
<clears throat> images like mother, warrior, caregiver, sage, creator. So lots of fun stuff coming this month, working in our visual, jimble, visual journals. And symbols often appear without us really thinking about them. But I found this beautiful article this morning from a famous piece that was this huge screen created in Korea with what they considered to be the 10 symbols of longevity. So it was the deer and water and sun and mountains and trees, natural elements. Um, there was an herb represented, the moon was represented. So symbols show up in every culture. And they're often universal, meaning that, so for example, the tree of life is a, a symbol that shows up in, in pretty much, way too much of that pain's graded. We'll bring some of that back later. That shows up in almost every culture. Like the Celtic tree of life is a famous representation. In Mexico, there's beautiful artwork created out of ceramics making these incredible tree of life imagery. It's always been one of my favorite symbols. <clears throat> Having grown up in San Antonio, Texas, I saw a lot of them. Just looking, what else? And I'm just kind of playing with whatever's on my desk. I didn't go off and kind of hunt for anything different. But I'm kind of digging this bluey panes gray against that background of lavender. Again, I know that my destination is to create a page that is going to represent arrows. And I just went and Googled, um, you know, free illustrations of arrows with feathers to have some drawing inspiration. I'm actually working on a large painting of arrows as well <clears throat> to have in my studio. Okay, time to get this dry one more time. So the drying is the part that's probably not fun to watch and um, it's a little noisy, but it helps me to keep working on these pages a little bit faster. And that's why we are painting live. You get all the froggy throat bits, all of the having to dry the page bits, the all the I don't know where I'm going next bits. And I don't have to do any editing, which I love. <clears throat> so if you're watching live, good morning. Thank you so much for being here this month. We are talking about symbols. We are talking about symbols, and today specifically I am working with the symbol of the arrow, which has so many different symbolic representations throughout time, from providing food and security to focus and clarity to love. It's one of those symbols that is truly universal in meaning, which is the definition of an archetype. These are unconscious patterns that occur across time. And when we think about how much the arrow just shows up, thank you, Marion, I appreciate that, um, <clears throat> how much the arrow shows up in just when we're driving and we see arrows pointing us or in an airport telling us <clears throat> where our gate is or what direction to go. Okay, I got some really funky colors happening here. <clears throat> have no idea where I'm going with these colors. I'm going to get this dry one more time, and then I'm just going to go back over it with some white gesso again.
All right, I think that's dry enough. I want to start to just sort of pull that page together. And in my usual style, I first, I wrote on my page, I did some journaling about the symbol of the arrow. I put gesso over the top of that, added some color and stencils. And now I'm coming back again with gesso. That may be a little more gesso than I wanted on there. So I will push some of that back, but just starting to add that white over the top is going to bring the page together. <clears throat> so I can still see some of what's happening underneath. I don't need to see it all. I love some of that. This was, a, I think, a phthalo blue-green. Yep, a phthalo, oh, yep, just phthalo green, but it's a bluey, bluey green showing through a little bit where that was still wet. Just cleaning off my brayer a bit. And now I'm just going to simply start thinking about where I want arrows to go. And as you're watching, whether you're watching live or the replay, I want to say thank you. So I'm at about 230 subscribers. I just started the channel a month ago. I'm here live Mondays to Thursdays at 7 a.m. Mountain Time, Mondays to Thursdays at 7 a.m. Mountain Time. And I just want to say thank you. I have so much gratitude to those of you that have su subscribed. And Blanca and Marion, thanks to you both for showing up live so frequently. It definitely makes it more fun for me when there's people here joining me live. So I'm just thinking now about where I want to go with my arrows. What do I want that to look like? Is there a different background color that's wanting to maybe go down first underneath those arrows? And I never take it lightly when people give me the gift of their time. So I'm always super, super appreciative of that. And I feel like I'm wanting some blue in that background to really kind of represent the sky and the arrow flying through the sky. So maybe I'm going to come over this one more time with a little more color. And my page isn't flat, so you can see that I'm getting a lot of texture from that brayer because I'm working on this page that uh, is a little bumpy from the pages that were created underneath. I love working in handmade journals. I appreciate you guys right back, both of you, Blanca and Mary, and appreciate you too. And um, I love working in handmade journals because I'm not as attached to them, especially working with like old recycled manila folders. There's nothing precious here. And I'm happy to just have this space to really just play in, experiment, this journal is just for me and for those of you that are watching. And again, I love working on the surface of, of manila folders. They take a lot um, of heavy beating for mixed media work. They're a great surface. It's a, um, something that I learned from my dear friend, Andrea Shebelu from a work of art studio. And we actually have a, a $10 class. I put the link in the chat for how we made this journal this year for season three of the creative stretch which i can't believe we're in the final two weeks of but we interviewed 12 incredible artists about their relationship with a huge variety of words that represent emotions or as Brene brown calls it the language of human experience Okay, so super digging this. Gonna hit this with the dryer one more time and then I'm gonna start adding in my arrows.
And as you're listening, you might start to think about, is there a symbol that you love to draw or paint? Is there a symbol that often shows up in your work? Or has there been a symbol that you have been seeing in different places? Is there a symbol that you've been seeing in different places that's, you know, already starting to maybe capture your attention a little bit. So just put some thought into what's a symbol that might guide or support you and think about your word of the year that you chose and what's a symbol that might help you sort of live the energy or be more focused on living out that word of the year. Okay, so I'm going to come in, and somehow I like this idea of sort of having three arrows on the page. I thought these were fun and um, festive. They're very decorative arrows. Some are more simple. Some are more decorated. But I'm just sort of eyeballing the, the center of the page. And I don't even know if you can see that drawing on there. And I also love choosing an animal of the year. And over on my Instagram page, I shared a painting that I completed yesterday of a moose. So the moose is the animal that I'm walking with this year. They're a lot about magic and power and focus. They're also very shy. Um, they're brilliant at camouflage. So we'll be talking more next week about animal symbolism. And I wouldn't have ever been drawn really to the to the moose. It's an interesting one for me. But um, living in Colorado has given me exposure to different animals. And when I was a kid, we've been coming to Rocky Mountain National Park and Estes Park every year since I was oh, in about the the sixth grade. So it's. <clears throat> <clears throat> been a huge part of my life and my mom now has lived in Estes Park for over 40 years I think and uh, when we were kids we never saw moose and then maybe when I was in college we'd start to see them on opposite side of the the park from Estes Park and it was you'd see them way off in the distance lying under some trees or down in the the river beds in the in the willows and it was really magic to see them <clears throat> and very uncommon. And over the last few decades, they have moved over the mountains to our side of Rocky Mountain National Park. And this summer, we were headed into the park for a picnic at our favorite picnic ground. And I'm just sort of eyeballing where these arrows are going and just kind of lining them up a little bit so there's a little bit of symmetry. There's also symbolism in the number three as well. I'm just sort of roughing these in. You can kind of see that on there. And we were headed into the park to meet my family for a picnic at our favorite picnic ground when a huge bull elk was walking right across the road. And of course, in Rocky Mountain National Park, whenever there is any kind of animal sighting like that, you know, there's also huge traffic jams, and it's just, uh, it becomes a little bit crazy, and it was still so magic to see this, this huge bull. They are, they're enormous animals, enormous animals, and then we got to the, the picnic area, and my sister-in-law had gone in early to 
grab our favorite table down by the river and she was literally jumping up and down with excitement because she had just seen a mama and a baby walk right by the picnic area and so just uh they've had a lot of presence and then we saw like three more females on our way out that day so they have been showing up very physically in in my life a lot this year which has been really interesting and also Estes Park is famous for what they call its town elk and um, there's huge herds of elk that live in the town year round and the park elk that live in the park and on our way up to Estes Park the couple of days before Christmas we saw a whole herd of bighorn sheep which is another animal that is very unique to this specific area so i'm trying to decide if i want to paint the arrows if i want to draw them on with some posca markers definitely going to want some more in the background and they do let people hunt the elk and the moose and i always have mixed feelings about that right and there's still um it's been very popular to go back to bow hunting over the, the last number of decades. And um, for the elk especially, it actually does create some crowd control, but it always, I don't know. And I grew up in Texas, you know, where my dad hunted, and my cousins and uncles all hunted but they ate what they hunted so again you can see how just something as simple as simple as an animal or a symbol can just create a lot of thoughts make us maybe even question some of you know the stories the beliefs I loved the movie Brave. I rewatched that movie recently. If you have not seen it, it is a wonderful mother daughter story. A wonderful story about archetypes. Bears are also present in that movie. And then there's the books. And my daughter loved the book. She devoured all of them. I think I made it through the, the first one, the books, and the, the movie, The Hunger Games. I think I even made a, a soul collage card at one point with the actor from The Hunger Games. This beautiful image of her with her bow and arrow and sort of that fierce focus and it's always interesting how something like that you know all of a sudden people were wanting to take up archery and became a representation of feminine strength all right so just getting these arrows down on the page so just curious as you're listening are you thinking about a symbol that is meaningful to you something that seems to be showing up I remember one of my dear friends when I was living in Texas. Her um, father passed away when she was relatively young. And she would start to see hearts everywhere when she was thinking about him. And so she always felt like these hearts were representative of him every time she saw a heart she knew that her dad was with her and so there's a symbolic connection with loved ones through the universal symbol of the heart so just thinking about how things show up the crescent moon is another famous symbol of the energy of the moon I'm just painting in some of these little beads here
So I'm loving how this is kind of coming together. I'm going to do a lot of detail work on this with my Posca markers to sort of bring them to life, add more detail. I love working with Poscas. I felt like they were one of those supplies. And there are many brands of paint markers out there, and people have different opinions. But for me, I love the, the Poscas. And I felt like they were a game changer in how I love to make art to be able to add a lot of the fine details to a page and to be able to add a lot of Zentangle patterns to my art. I love incorporating Zentangle into my art. And it's one of those things that sort of comes and goes across time for me, right? Like sometimes I'm doing a lot, sometimes I'm not doing it as much and feeling more drawn to the structure of those patterns in my own work recently. Find my water here. My table seems to be very cluttered this morning. Also feeling the arrow. I love that Marian. Greek, Artemis, Roman, Diana. Yes, the, the huntress. I love the stories of Artemis as well. And I love the, the Greek myths in general, you know, thinking about Artemis, then I start to think about Athena, and the symbol of the owl was something that she is always shown with Artemis and Diana with the bow and arrow. So if we think about famous myths, our characters are often accompanied by recognizable symbols, recognizable symbols. Okay, I'm going to hit this with the dryer again, and then I'm going to start adding a little detail with some postcodes. If you're not familiar with working with paint markers, you definitely want your paint to be nice and dry underneath because it's easy to really come in and destroy the, the tips of your markers. I'm just grabbing some colors here. And they tend to last a long time. I've had these for a really, really long time. So I'm going to come in and just start to build these up with a little bit of color. We're going to make these feather-like, again, just working quickly, keeping it very abstract. This is not about perfection, but about just capturing the, the representation and the, the visual imagery of the arrow. Ooh, that one was still a little bit wet there where it was thick. We'll come back to that one a little bit later. And each of these arrows has beads, it has feathers. Feathers are another symbol 
flightness, flight. So even within the arrow, there's multiple symbols being represented here. And I, feathers are another one of those things that are, for me, very fun to fun to draw. And it's good when you're making art to challenge yourself to move quickly that when we get caught in perfection and try to slow down and over focus we sort of lose that that connection and so it can be really helpful sometimes to just give yourself permission to work faster than you normally would and not to get as caught up as you might at other times, but see what happens when you just allow yourself to work quickly. Remember, it's just paint and paper. Everything is paint overable. So anything that I create here that I decide that I don't love, it would be really easy to just go back in with my gesso and white it out and start over again. And when I'm working this way in a visual journal, just sort of abstractly building up these pages, again, this is, this is for me, and it's about the meaning, right? It's not about the beautiful finished page. but it's about capturing that visual representation of what's the thing that I'm thinking about, that I'm working with. And even just learning to add symbols like this to the background of a page, to tuck in an arrow somewhere, or a heart, or a moon, or a sun, or a star, or a cross, or a peace sign, all the different symbols that occur in our world and in our psyches adds meaning and richness to a page. It makes the page your own. It adds some of that sort of just deeper meaning. And I'm just adding in a little texture and pattern. Not sure I'm loving that. Green isn't quite popping on the purple. Maybe bring in some of this hot pink. The nice thing about Posca's is that they are acrylic paint, so they will dry permanent on the page. They will dry permanent on the page. Meaning I can paint over them, I could put water over the top of them, right? There's a lot of different things that I could do on top of my Posca's. And again, I'm just adding a little bit of color and to the page. Not even sure it needs the color. I'm kind of thinking I really loved just the, the purple and the white, so I may just sit with this for a little bit and decide do I want to add the color or not? If I came in and added some more patterns. Growing up in Texas and being out in the country, my dad, like I said, he liked to hunt and uh, he used to take us fishing. And But being back out in the hill country, we would often find old arrowheads on the property. It was rare, but it was always pretty, pretty neat. And my dad 
had a beautiful arrowhead collection that he passed on to my son. So just giving a little bit of dimension to these. So again, we start to think about symbols and we think about, you know, how do they show up in our lives? Where do we see them? Where are we present to their appearance, to the meaning? Again, just adding little spots of color. This almost looks like a bunch of leaves more than an arrow. Getting some more of that lavender back in from underneath. And I love creating these pages that are simple, that don't take a ton of time, but just have the, again, that opportunity. If I had done the, the journaling with you here, this whole page took about an hour. And if I hadn't been using the dryer, I would have painted it in maybe a few different layers. I can spend a lot of time just adding more marks, decorations. I don't know why I'm feeling like this page just needs a little bit more of this bright orange. I was happy to have some time over the last few days to work on a canvas. I haven't, uh, I haven't been painting much. I've been doing a lot of art journaling, and so the moose painting was the first painting that I've done in a while and it felt good to be back at my canvas. So again just adding a little some more marks on the page. makes the page somehow to me feel finished. It's also part one of my favorite parts is just adding some of these marks. And you'll notice that I'm adding the same color and the same mark in at least three different places to create symmetry across the, across the page. sort of echoing some of the shapes of my stencils that were underneath. And we often think that when we look at other people's visual journaling work that it looks complex, right? And this was a few layers. It wasn't a ton of layers. There was no collage in this one. So letting go of thinking that Pages have to be complex. Sometimes simplicity is the best policy. And simplicity is definitely one of those words that I am leaning into. Sometimes I can get uh, a little overexcited with the marks and want to just keep going. They're so fun to make.
And here I have this simple page. It's interesting these colors are a little bit muted, but I think I'm okay with that for this design. I kept the design very, very simple because I wanted to capture the essence of the arrow. Just bring in a little bit of color to these feathers here. And if I really wanted these Posca colors to pop, I would have painted my arrows white in order to make these vibrant colors really pop on top of those darker colors. But I like that it's a little understated, a little bit muted. And all the colors that I used in the arrows, I'm just adding those same colors to my background. Again, just, you know, that sense of just ensuring. <clears throat> and I'm feeling like I want to add on here the word arrow, just because it's my symbol of the year. So maybe I'm going to come in. Mm, too big. I'm not going to make that fit in there. And I'd never thought about a, a symbol of the year until I started working one of my first painting teachers, mentors, was uh, an amazing woman named Whitney Freya, who was the one who started talking about having a symbol of the year. And every year, and I started, I think I took my first painting class with her about a decade ago. And so I'm always so much more present to this idea of a symbol of the year, thanks to Whitney. And how do you come up with a symbol of a year? So I would, you could do it through meditation and ask to be shown or through prayer. Oftentimes you could just flip open a book and see, you could look through a list of famous symbols of which there are many, many lists on the internet. And you could just start to notice what are the symbols that are showing up for you in different places. I'm wishing I'd left maybe a little bit of space in here to do a little bit of writing. And what I'm thinking is that I could add a little card here with just some of my paper tape and just one of my little painted index cards and add in a little bit about the word of or why I've chosen this as a symbol of the year. Even though I've done some of my journaling, it's feeling like there's that one more little piece that I want to add. So I am going to go, I just saw actually a pre-painted postcard. And I can put my hands on, grab that paper tape. I have a huge studio and it's, um, most of my stuff is on the opposite side of the studio from where I am recording. And I had two or three of these just lying around this morning. This was actually painted by my friend Andrea, one of her paintings. So it's kind of fun to have her energy come in here as well. And sometimes just adding these little bits and pieces like you've seen me do before help me have things feel finished. I'm not sure I like the ribbon on there, although I could make it a flip up or flip in. 
If I didn't have one of these already painted, I would definitely come in and paint it to match the page. And I love that I grabbed this one and it more or less already matches. Okay, so I'm going to take this ribbon off of here for a second. And what I'm thinking is that um, I love the beads and things on the feather that I can see where I could add some decoration, some dimension, maybe even string a few beads into the journal. It's really wanting to go over here, probably like this, so I can flip it closed like that. And so I will probably do some journaling on this card a little bit later, but at least I can have 2023 symbol of the year is an, and I will come back and do some writing about why I chosen this so that I just have a little bit of that to remember. And it almost feels like it would be cool to mimic that arrow and have that page flip up from the top but I could still see the arrow over and I can still see the arrows underneath. I love adding tip-ins, flip-outs, additional pieces to my journal to really look at what matters but it feels like this one definitely needs an arrow on it as well so that it feels like it fits in with the page. So what if I just come in here so you guys are seeing me just sort of walk and talk through my creative practice. Of how I give things the meaning they need to have. Again, this wasn't about making a beautiful page, although it's a, it's a perfectly sweet page. I love the, the colors and the, and the marks. I love the honoring and celebration of my symbol of the year. And that black is just about dead. All right, let's try some white in here. There we go. So I was thinking about the arrows that are on here on the end of a Think about the feathers on the end of an arrow, which made me think about my husband and I love all the Marvel movies. And there's a, a character, Hawkeye, one of the warriors who has amazing vision and sight. And the bow and arrow is his weapon of choice as one of the Avengers. So again, just coming in and adding, brightening up some of those colors, making the postcard my own. So I love repurposing art as well and thinking about, well, how, how can things fit together? So now I have an arrow here as well. And it feels a little bit more like this matches the page. So what's on the other side? So I am going to more or less just right in the center of this page. If I can line that up there. More or less. And I'm just going to take that ribbon and put it back on there because I love things that hang off my journal that add texture and color.
This is a, just a hand-painted piece of muslin from another project. And I love the, the colors match. You almost can't see that postcard that's in there. But now I can go back and write a little bit more about the arrow on that page. And so this was a super fun and simple way to honor the arrow as my symbol of the year, to have a way to remember that symbol all year long. We're going to continue to talk about symbols tomorrow, and we're going to take a little bit different direction. We're going to play with the Hamsa, the symbol of the Hamsa, um, and I'll tell you about what that means and why I chose it to play with this week. And thank you, as always, for joining me. This is Painting in Your PJs with Minette, where we gather to create and talk about all things life, love, and art. I am particularly passionate about visual journaling as a way to not, over, not only make beautiful art, but art that is meaningful and helps us to connect with what's going on in our own lives in different and unique ways. So a happy, happy new year. If you're joining me live, thank you so much. If you're watching the replay, thank you. Great to have you here. Leave me a note in the comments if you're watching the replay and let me know that you stopped by. Have a beautiful rest of your day and I will be back tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Mountain Time to continue our Painting in Your PJs journey. Bye-bye.